What's up, everybody? Welcome to APN. And today we have Sheriff Mack on to talk about uh, what's going on in the country now about the Constitution and stuff like that. Well, Sheriff Mack, first, let's uh, let the uh, audience know more about you and uh, where, uh, where what kind of uh, stuff you used to do back in the uh, when you were sheriff. <laughs> Well, it it uh, it was an, an amazing law enforcement career. Um, I I spent twenty years in law enforcement. Uh, I did everything in law enforcement imaginable. That you can't you can't name anything that happens in law enforcement that I haven't done. Uh, I I w with maybe one little exception, I was never on a SWAT team, but I was on the hostage negotiation team. And we cross trained with SWAT, so I I trained with SWAT, uh, not as extensively as the the regular members did, but uh, I did a lot of that. Uh, and I was an undercover narcotics officer. Um, I was school resource officer. I was a patrol officer. I was a patrol sergeant. I was a detective. I specialized in crimes against children, and I also specialized in uh, juvenile delinquency. And uh, I don't talk about many of those cases anymore. Uh, mm. I mean, I never did afterwards. Uh, uh, I wouldn't share some of these horrible, horrible things that happened to children. I would not share that with my wife and family. Uh, I didn't want to dwell on them either. And I still don't. But I do have some amazing stories of courage and bravery and miracles. Uh, and I've always wanted to put all those in a book. I, I hope to do uh, a documentary of um, my career, my life. It, it was, it's been very miraculous because uh, primarily when I finally, uh, after 11 years in law enforcement up in Utah, I moved home and that was all totally miraculous. I didn't want to move home. My wife didn't want to move home. We were totally happy. And then an epiphany occurred to both me and my wife at the same time. And we moved home and ran for sheriff. I should never have been elected. Uh, I hadn't lived there for 12 years. I should have never married my wife. Hey, what a horrible thing to say about your wife, huh? We've been married 49 years. Wow. Uh, and But she was way too young. Uh, I fell in love with her before I found out how old she was and that her brother uh, actually married my high school sweetheart. So my high school sweetheart was now my sister-in-law. And so everything was against it. Uh, and it was not my idea. It was not my idea to marry my wife, but it was definitely uh, inspired. And her family uh, was very constitutional and they all taught me and trained me very patiently to learn the constitution. And I did. And uh, I became very dedicated to it. And then I became the first sheriff in American history to launch a, mary, a major lawsuit against the federal government, against the overreach of the Clinton administration. Uh, it went all the way to the Supreme Court and we won. And I said we, because six other sheriffs from across the country joined me in that lawsuit. And this was because of the Brady Bill. And the Brady Bill was the first time in history where Congress and the White House attempted, well, they, they promulgated legislation and attempted therein to commandeer the office of sheriff for federal bidding. And had we lost that lawsuit, every sheriff in this country would now be reporting to some bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., and Washington, D.C. would be controlling everything that we do. Hey, it, we saved, it saved the are. office of the sheriff, and it saved the Second Amendment because it was a, a pile of, of crap uh, uh, gun control. And we, these seven sheriffs, did more to protect the Second Amendment that history doesn't even realize because we stopped Brady Bills, half of one and all of Brady Bills two, three, four, and five, which if they had been uh, completed and fulfilled as they were scheduled to do, uh, the Second Amendment would be completely gutted and destroyed during that five-year period. And that would have been from 94 through 99. And then uh, 
I, I lost my third election, and um, that's a long story too. Well, no, it's not kind of a short story. And then I moved back to Utah where some people asked me to come up there and run for sheriff, said we would love to have a constitutional sheriff here. Come on and run. I won the convention where delegates come from the county and vote for local officials. And I won that two to one over my opponent. And uh, everybody said it was going to be really close. And then one year, almost to the day, I won the case at United States Supreme Court, December. Uh, well, sorry, we went to the Supreme Court December of 96. The decision came out written by Justice Scalia in June of 1997. Then in June of 1998, my primary election in Utah County was happening. And three days before the election, the FBI and IRS raid my office and the headline in the local newspaper, Mac, raided by the FBI. And it was done at the exact time to do the optimal damage to my campaign and my election without giving me really any time to respond. And I lost. And then after I lost, ha, another miracle. I never heard from the FBI or IRS ever again. Apparently they got what they wanted. Yeah. And I have never served a day in law enforcement since, but I have written eight books since, and I've traveled the country and I've been to all 50 states and I've done presentations in 48. Imagine if they would have kept the Brady bill in there and the Supreme Court didn't do anything about it. And then you have 9-11 happen and uh, also have the uh, Patriot Acts involved in it as well. You want to talk oh. about destroying uh, the police forces and sheriff uh, sh uh, sheriffs around uh, the United States. You thought crime was bad now. <laughs> well, it, it is. And, and there's really a movement to shut down sheriffs and especially constitutional sheriffs now. Uh, and, you know, it looks like some states are just going to say, well, we can't just shut down the constitutional sheriffs. We got to shut them all down. And so King County now in Washington uh, has said that the sheriff will no longer be elected. No more of this stuff about the people being in charge of appointing the sheriff. From now on, it'll be a committee. Uh, and uh, it's it's turning the sheriff into a, another bureaucrat instead of a servant by foreign of the people. And that's really what we preach at CSPOA. I, I formed the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. I wrote a book about the power of the constitutional sheriff. I penned the phrase constitutional sheriff and boy, have we had an impact on America. And I can tell you story after story of sheriffs who have stood up to the federal government and state government. And there were over 500 sheriffs who stood against the COVID-19 mandates. And I'm so proud that that happened. I'm proud of this lawsuit. And every one of you, all of you, all your listeners, all your supporters should get the copy of this because it's the most powerful Supreme Court case on the 10th Amendment in the history of our country. And it's one of the most powerful cases ever to be rendered by the Supreme Court. That's awesome. I'm so happy that you guys did what you did. I remember the Brady Bill law. Uh, back then, I was just getting my first firearm. So... Yeah. I I'm old enough to remember. Yeah, that was an abomination. It's like you read the founding fathers and it's in a nutshell that Thomas Jefferson says, hey, an unarmed man is much more likely to be attacked than an armed one. Why? Would I love that quote from Jefferson. Yeah, it, it's, it's an awesome quote because it's there's so much truth in it. Why would you take weapons away from law abiding citizens? Then only the criminals will have them and they'll be at an advantage. But then, Sheriff, we also at the same time have going on a numbers game. This is what I don't like about the feds. All of the lying and the misrepresenting. How many times people, good guys with a gun, save or prevent horrible situations each year in this country? And there's many tens of thousands. And the news, which works for the government, acts like it isn't <laughs> happening. Well, uh, if you read John Lott's book, uh, More Cr uh, More Guns, Less Crime, uh, he documents that there's over a million instances every year yeah. where people defend themselves with guns. And most of the time, all you have to do is brandish the gun. You don't need to fire it. You just have to show that you have it. 
And, uh, you know, there was there was an incident here in Arizona about eight years ago, maybe a little bit less, where a, a patrol officer, a DPS officer uh, on I-10, just on the west side of this valley here, um, actually uh, was getting in a fight uh, at a traffic stop. And a citizen going through Arizona from California, of all places, uh, st- stopped and asked the, the officer if he needed help. And the officer said, yes, this guy's got my gun, shoot him. And he cool. did. And this officer saved, this uh, citizen saved this officer's life. And he, he was right. never prosecuted. And he his name was never divulged to the public. And uh, there's lots of incidences like that and, and more. And it, it's especially, uh, I, I know a guy that was just uh, getting robbed at a service station at a, a Circle K or something like that. And the, the guy just pulled out his gun. And they, of course, they take off running. They're a bunch of cowards. And they, they don't want to attack anyone that has a gun. They don't want to go in a home where somebody is packing a gun. And so our government seems like they want to make it easier for criminals. And no. They want never, to take their guns Never away. turn your weapons of war over to the government. Yeah. Yeah. The 19th century proved that. I mean, what, 100 million people at least that were disarmed were outright starved to death or put into pogroms and slaughtered in one way or another because they gave up their right to bear arms. I totally agree with you. Yeah. You, you can't give up your, your right to keep and bear arms. Uh, you just, you, you just can't because you, then you're depending on government to take care of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, that and, never works out. Yeah. His, history is scarred and scarred and scarred with incidents where government takes care of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you about the recent news, what happened to Trump uh, this weekend. And uh, first thing, I guess, is uh, have you you've done protection detail for people and for probably for president when they come in town? Several times. Yeah. Several times. Yeah. So uh, if you could give us an idea of what might have uh, could have been done to actually prevent this from happening also there and also the one in Pennsylvania as well. Well, uh, I was a graduate of the FBI National Academy back in 1991. Uh, while I was sheriff, I got invited to the academy, and it, it was it was great training. I will I will tell you this: I believe the FBI should be abolished uh, right after the IRS is abolished, of course, and the Department of Education and a, about 20 other bureaucracies in Washington D.C. Th- these bureaucracies have no constitutional authority to be in existence. Um, Maybe a little bit, but we can go over the, 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 the law enforcement powers that were delegated to the federal government. But primarily what really shocks me is the second attempt, is like as if they didn't learn anything from Butler, Pennsylvania, two months ago. And this, this is really embarrassing. But you have to look at this from a law enforcement standpoint. Who benefited? Who benefits from this? It doesn't appear that Donald Trump really benefited from either one. He got some sympathy uh, from the first one. This time, he wasn't even shot at. He didn't get a lot of sympathy. In fact, he got a lot of complaints that Trump needs to tone down uh, the temperature of the rhetoric. Trump needs to tone it down. None of these liars and hypocrites in the in the leftist Democrat media, they don't need to tone it down. Calling him Hitler and Mussolini and Stalin and uh, and all of this as if he were some kind of murderer, uh, you know. But our our federal government has a long history of violence, and and unprovoked violence, and and all I can say is those major incidences where. Uh, major incidents where the federal government got out of control and committed acts of murder against citizens, uh, mostly unarmed citizens, uh, that if the sheriff in these places had remained in charge, we would have never heard of uh, the Branch Davidians or Randy Weaver or any uh, any others, uh, many others. Uh, and, And the law still would have been enforced. 
And it, the FBI and the IRS and, and others that come in and they don't even live in these communities. And so they can do whatever they want. And no matter what they do, they still are rewarded uh, for their behavior and usually very criminal behavior. And so this time in uh, Florida at the golf course, you have to wonder uh, why there aren't uh, uh, better patrols. Uh, and then there were shots fired. You have to wonder what kind of weapons the Secret Service dash FBI, whoever it was that uh, fired at the suspect, uh, three or four or five times they fired. We don't know all the uh, facts yet because, of course, they don't want to expose their incompetence. And 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 they're not incompetent. Not they're they're trained. These are these are supposed to be the best law enforcement security agencies in the world. And when they're not, you have to wonder. And it it's reasonable to have these suspicions and speculation that it was an inside job. And even uh, Donald Trump Jr. was talking about that because this is so egregious uh, on the mistakes that they made. And so, of course, the natural tendency of, of human beings is going to be of human nature is you're going to say, well, if these guys are so good, why does this keep happening? And, right. and, and so uh, I don't have the answer for that, but I do have this uh, answer. You guys blew it again. And this guy was sitting out in the, the, the trees and the forest at the golf course for 12 hours and you had no way to know and he carries a large rifle in into that area and you, are there no uh, vehicles that they patrol the perimeter with and and yet uh, and they missed him yeah these were supposed to be the best marksmen in the world and they missed him. And then he drives 45 miles away and they catch him. What is going on? Yeah, the issue to me is how does someone get an AR-15 or an AK-47? And he's a prohibited felon. And he's a prohibited felon. Yeah, right. right. We we both know that never stops anyone from getting gun. Right, of course. How did, how did they get it? The first guy, Thomas Crooks, within 145 yards of the... The, the most likely person to be the next president. It's yeah. like, there's some errors here that I heard Eric Prince talking and he's like, once you get to a certain level of ineptness, it's malevolence. There's no difference. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And, and the trust the American people don't have uh, in these agencies anymore. And, and rightfully so. Uh, and uh, it's just astonishing that, we keep putting up with this. And of course, the supposed president of the United States, Joe Biden, comes out and says, uh, the Secret Service need more manpower. Well, right. when he asked for more manpower, what did you do? Yep. Nothing. God. Hey, your so, point I mean, that I mean, you these made about. Idiots just, uh, you, you know, it just keeps going and going. And then, of course, Kamala uh, will act like she's some sort of hero because she knows how to be president. She doesn't. No. And she doesn't know she doesn't know anything. And of course, she keeps hiding uh, from the press because she knows she can't handle it. So, of course, ABC had to cheat with her to make sure that she could answer two plus two during the the the, the actual debate. But they primed her on all the questions. Uh, I could tell Sheriff, we were live at the time mm -hmm. and I remarked during the first break. I said one, I use this language. I said 100% she had the questions beforehand and worked with the moderators. She and, did. And the she reason did. that we could all, like Matt knew too, you knew. The reason we knew is because she is a cluster at trying to answer impromptu questions. She's the worst. She's worse than Biden at it. And he's yeah. got dementia. And yeah, he's sudden, sick. She's not, and she's not sick. She's just stupid. Yes, and all of a sudden she comes out and she's flawless. Yeah, and, and, and she lied the whole she's time. Confident and she's sharp, and and she's. I love the looks that she was given to Trump. You know, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so so she's in control finally of a situation with the press, 
uh, call a debate. And then we found out why later. You know, that's, yeah. And, 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 and right, coming out. she looked like it. I mean, so this was a different lady. And, and so I, I really wish Trump would, uh, and I tried to get this to him, and I tried to get it to people who I know, know him, that he said they would give it to him. This is the response when, when anyone, anywhere during a debate or any place else, if someone accuses him of being a felon, a convicted felon, and he should just simply respond, uh, yes, and you know, I've been arrested over 30 times. I've been charged over 30 times. And so was Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Mm -hmm. King was charged over 30 times, arrested over 30 times, taken to jail over 30 times. And his battle was the same one that mine is today, against corrupt government. And I will always stand strong for you, the American people, so this doesn't happen to you. And I will make sure that corrupt government doesn't go after you or your families ever again. And and oh. and he could use this uh, and turn this giant lemon into the best lemonade ever. And I really wish that somebody would get him, uh, get that to him, because it these people think Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King walked on water or walked on water. And, and I believe he was a good man. And he, I, I quote him all the time. And the thing of it is the, the today the NAACP uh, is a branch of the Democrat party instead of actually defending civil rights, our organization, civil right. We defend civil rights more than any other group in the country. And, and, and yet they call me, a domestic terrorist, and I've never committed an act of violence in my life. In oh, 20 no, years man. of law enforcement, I never committed an act of violence towards another human being. They call you that? Yes. The Southern Poverty Law Center has me as the top 40 terrorist in America. Oh, you know I what? made the top 40. They, yeah. they hey, Listen, I want you to explain to the audience what you meant about preventing Waco or Ruby Ridge by, by being a constitutional sheriff. So what authority would that have given you to shut those bogus investigations down before they came became disasters where a young lady is holding her baby shot by a sniper and then they all the FBI snipers get medals afterwards. Right. right. No, you're right. What, uh, what, what could you have done as a sheriff of those counties? I work with Randy Weaver pretty extensively. And uh, it wasn't because we were already friends. It was because I met him at a gun show and I said, Hey, I would like to uh, hear from you and know everything that happened to you and your family. I want to know the truth. And, and then he and I ended up writing a book together. It was called uh, it's out of print. I ought to get it back out of uh, off the shelves and put it back out there. But um, it's called Vicky, Sam and America, how the government killed all three. And, yeah. and it, it, it just m blows my mind what the FBI did to him and his family. Uh, killed his son, killed his wife, blew her head off, half off while she's holding a, a, an 11-month-old baby in front of her two little daughters, yeah. uh, Rachel and uh, Sarah. And then he gets, Lon Horiuchi, who pulled the trigger, gets promoted to SAC in Dallas, Texas. And then the U S marshals who actually killed Sam, uh, were all given medals of valor and, and, and Kurt. And, and so I'm sitting there going, where is it that you shoot a little, uh, 14 year old boy who looked 10. He's very small. For, he was very small for his age. And you give them medals of valor, even if it was justified, which it was not, even if it was justified, you get medals of valor for that. Yeah, he you know, shot. They shot his dog, and he reacted. Well, that's what Stryker was shot that. first, and that's why that's why uh, Kevin Harris and the family friend was the family friend that was with Kevin. I mean, was with Sam. They started shooting at whoever was killing their dog. Yeah, and they didn't. They didn't know who these guys were. They had no As clue. As a sheriff, what could what you have done to see, prevent? That's the thing. The sheriffs were both involved in this process, and they both acquiesced and let the federal government take over. They should have said, uh, and one of them did say this in uh, 
Waco, just let me go bring him in for you. I'll bring him in. But see, the FBI is too proud for that. Yeah. They don't want some country bumpkin sheriff showing them that we could just go knock on the door and bring both of these suspects in. And, and that's all it would have taken. And both sheriffs could have and would have done that. Yeah. But you had to have these FBI agents grandstanding and, and actually uh, putting on a show so that they could get a bigger budget from Congress. And that's actually the, the intent of the BATF who had some agents killed in Waco. And so what I do know, and I did talk uh, briefly with the sheriff in Waco, and he told me I should have stayed in charge. I yeah. could have saved a lot of lives. And if he had just done his job and stayed in charge and he said, no, you're not in charge here, FBI. I will go get David Korsh and bring him to you. He'll be in my jail and whatever charges you think you have against him, you can go ahead. But uh, I would prefer that the charges and trial and all of that happen right here where he's from, because you guys don't need to haul him off to uh, some gulag in Washington, D.C. Regardless, it would have remained peaceful and 86 lives would have been saved. Instead, the FBI has become an arm of the Democrat Party, like you were just saying the Mm -hmm. Other institutions are part of the Democrat Party. Go ahead, Matt. They're, they're a political well, hit squad. Well, when you look at what happened that day, I was in Texas at the time when it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, my first thought was like, they're making an example out of these people. That's what it looked like to me. It was more, well, of, it was more like, this is what happens if you uh, do exactly what they did. You know, right. uh, cl have right. guns, have weapons. Right. And I, I, you, but that's the same. That's yeah, that's what they do. That's why they, they uh, commit acts of violence. You better do what you're told or this is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Get in line. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's really sad that uh, we've allowed that to keep going. And no matter what the FBI does, they're excused, you know, and they never, uh, you know, you hear Biden and some of these uh, prosecutors and, and Kamala say that no one's above the law, and especially Donald Trump. Well, <laughs> uh, we are now in the middle of writing a press release, the, con the CSPOA. We're writing a press release and we're sending a letter to every sheriff in the country and every attorney general in every state. And we're asking them to conduct investigations, criminal investigations, on every public official who's had anything to do with aiding and abetting illegal immigration. Oh, that's great. That is a crime. What do we know? Why do we need sheriffs and and district attorneys or uh, attorney general attorneys general to do this? Because Washington D.C. will not do it. They're the and, ones who broke the law. Of course. And they're not, yeah, they're part of the problem, every one of them. And so, of course, it's our it's our duty, it's our job to do, to protect the American people. And because of illegal immigration and, and the open borders prompted by the Democrats and this administration, the American people are now in extreme danger because of the terrorists and cartels who have infiltrated our country and the dissidents from China and the dissidents from Russia and all of our enemies, our most ardent enemies, have now set up shop in America. And does anybody think they're here to play tiddlywinks or to sing Kumbaya out by the uh, bonfire? Uh, they're here to do an attack and they will. And I, I believe that there's not nearly enough people uh, aware of this or ready for this and prepared in every way uh, with food, uh, water, uh, guns and ammo, gold and silver, uh, and and working with your sheriff uh, to create a strong posse so that he has a Minuteman organization that he can depend on at a moment's notice. Yeah, I think that's an absolutely genius idea. It's my name on YouTube is Minuteman. Oh, good. I like that. I well, now, now every one of your audience, I want to tell something to. Folks, 
the peaceful and effective solutions that we have left, you can count on two fingers. And I'm not kidding. Now, yeah. look, I appreciate what you two are doing. I love that you're getting information out there. That is vital. I love the gun owners of America and some of the other uh, gun owner, uh, gun rights groups. I, I, I love the uh, freedom that people are preaching about. The Black Robe Regiment, the, the sheriffs that have worked with their pastors. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about that real quick. But the theme it is that boots on the ground, defenses being built and erecting the barriers, as Madison called it. Do we have enough counties and sheriffs working with the people in our communities to erect the barriers against the encroachments of the national authority? Right now, it's not encroachment anymore. It's yeah. our enemies have infiltrated our communities. Look around. Look at what's going on. Look at what Oregon just said. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, we got illegal aliens uh, registered to vote. That was an accident. What a bunch of liars. They've been doing this for the last uh, 20 years, except during um, Trump's administration. Trump reversed it. But during Clinton's administration, some during Bush and, and a lot during uh, Obama, and now a whole, intentionally so, the reason that they allowed all these people in here was to get them registered to vote. And that's treason. And now all we're asking is that that be investigated and find the truth and have those responsible answer to the law. And that's yeah. what we're pushing. And I need everyone's help. We can't do this alone. And we need everyone on this program to become a member of the CSPOA. This is the most powerful, effective, peaceful solution in America. Do I hope Trump gets in? Yes. Will they ever leave him alone? No. Okay. And if we get enough sheriffs, we can make this happen and we'll have his back and we will be ready. And you can get trained with us every Wednesday. Tomorrow we have it at uh, 1230 Pacific time, 330 Eastern, an hour training with our CSPA posse to where you get trained to work with your sheriff and help him form a posse. Folks, it's everybody. It's not just sheriffs. It's not just cops. It's everybody. If you're not involved in the solution, if you're not involved in the process, it's not going to happen. Don't depend on politicians or anyone else to take care of you. You can work with your sheriff right now and he can help you and you can help him and all of you can help us get this message out, get you trained, get your sheriff trained, and get everybody working together in this holy cause of liberty. And folks, we need you. And becoming a member is very easy. It's only $11 a month or $99 a year. And folks, you help keep us funded that way, you know. Yes, we're looking for a lot of numbers. This is a grassroots deal. But we don't have enough now to take this out there. We're actually, how, do, how do we get every AG notified? We have to hire people to call them. We have to hire people to look up uh, phone numbers and emails. If you all of you can do that, please send us every email. Uh, we've had emails from the past from sheriffs, but that's getting thin because Many of the sheriffs that we've been working with the last 10 years aren't sheriffs anymore. Right. And so, folks, we absolutely need help. We need volunteers. We need funding. And the holy cause of liberty needs you. And we need you. And we need well, America to survive. You're right on the cusp of probably getting a lot of members as the sheer weight of the amount of illegal immigrants that they brought in. Yeah. hits American cities. Um, a day isn't going by now without, you know, disasters. So. Well, look at Aurora, Colorado, folks. That's nothing. That's kindergarten stuff compared to what's coming. 
They've shown us over and over. And you know what small towns are doing in Colorado now? They're suing Denver because Denver brought a lot of illegal aliens in there because they're a sanctuary city. That also is against the law. Aiding and abetting illegal or criminals of any kind is against the law. But those who specifically and intentionally who paid for their travel expenses to get here. These gangs did not walk here from Venezuela. Okay. No. They did not. Okay. So we, uh, we can start investigating that and I'll, I'll, I guarantee you know these investigations is. are going to be tough. Yeah. The, all these NGOs, Matt could tell you, he'd break down the entire thing. I mean, we, we've been following for a couple of years. You, you sound like the couple of points you made a couple of minutes ago. Matt and I have been saying them for two years. He's making the same same point that, that you are as far as citizenship and, and the, the importance of the Constitution. And yeah. the federal government only wants to dilute our rights. They'd like you in a 15-minute city and to own nothing and be happy. It almost seems like that's what half of our government wants for the American people. And it's, it's yeah. horrid. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, uh, should we all be concerned? Yes. Should we be a little bit afraid? Yes. Uh, because that motive, if that motivates you to get involved, uh, then do it. Uh, you know, fear is one of the great uh, human uh, factors of behavior. Uh, and if that gets you moving, so be it. But I'm telling you right now, my motivation is love uh, for my country. It's also love for the majesty of heaven. And it's also love for my family. And that's my greatest motivation. And we have two solar generators. We have two of them. And my wife just said yesterday, hey, we need to get those out and get them charged and uh, see how they work. And so we don't wait for, you know, when we actually need it and spend all that time trying to get them going. Uh, and we are going to do that. But we have a pretty good water supply. One is, uh, or, or two, both of, I have two children that live within two miles of me and both have swimming pools. That's a, that's a pretty good way, uh, but you might get a lot of people stealing that water. But at the same time, we, we also have, 25 gallon jugs where you put on them the uh, water machines we have 20 of those and we keep those in the garage at all times we re always replenish that so we have 20 of those so we'll always have a, a pretty good four or five month supply of just drinking water and we we don't bathe with that and so if we don't bathe we don't bathe uh but anyway folks uh we got to be prepared you got to make sure you have food i get my food at numana foods and folks, I got my solar uh, panels, my solar generators. They uh, they have panels. I get those from SAT123, SAT123.com. Now, you can get them anywhere you want, but this is a, a good group who supports us and has been one of our sponsors. And that's where I get my uh, satellite phones, which you should all have. Uh, because if, if the grid goes down, phones aren't going to work anymore. And so they have uh, satellite phones that go straight up to the satellites and don't use those towers. They don't need the towers. Their towers are 150 miles up in space. And so all of those preparations I'm a part of. And communications is key. And keeping your power on is also key. Because how long would you be able to keep gas or natural gas in a generator? Yeah, so all of this, guns and ammo, absolutely necessary and vital, uh, and satellite phones and solar generators. And Numana Foods, I have lots of that in my pantry and as a 25-year shelf life. So I like that, and I also have about a year of supply of a lot of canned goods, canned fruit, uh, vegetables, uh, meats, yeah. And I, I've got all of those, you know, buy, buy uh, uh, 50 cans of tuna. Okay. It's, it stores for two or three years. So anyway, folks, right. this is all necessary. It sounds a little bit scary, 
but when you're prepared, you don't need to be afraid. And you know what? Uh, I'm glad I have all those guns and I'm glad I have all the ammunition. Never can have too many. <laughs> That's true. Well, Sheriff, uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, if you could let everybody know where they can find you, what social media is and, and uh, links they can find you at. Okay. Well, social media is usually hooked to CSPOA or Constitutional Sheriff. Uh, I think it says Constitutional Sheriff Richard Mack on Facebook. Uh, but you can find me and you can find that. But the main one is our website. And CSPOA, C is in Charlie, S is in Sam, P is in Paul, O, A, CSPOA.org. And you can become a member there. You can make a donation there. Uh, you can contact us from there. Uh, but folks, what did the founding fathers say in the last sentence of the Declaration of Independence? And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. We must do likewise. And I'm asking you to join us in this holy cause. My wife and I have dedicated our lives to this. We have dedicated our life and fortune and sacred honor to this. And we're asking you to join us in that cause. And thank you, Matt and Romeo. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Uh, we, hope, we hope to have you on again. Let's do it. Be happy to.